16th Lecture on Church History. Today is our second lecture on the modern age. Number 8. The Suppression of the Jesuits. Number 1. The Reason for Their Suppression. The reason is the Jesuits were corrupt. Also, no great leader emerged from among them. They were greedy for money and took part in conspiracies, which led to their weaknesses being exposed. Missionaries who were sent to China conformed to China's customs and abandoned the essence Number 2. Banishment of the Jesuits Number 1. Banishment from Portugal The Jesuits trained their army in Paraguay of South America and attacked the Spanish and Portuguese armies. Furthermore, it was widely believed by the public that the Jesuits were plotting to assassinate King Joseph the First. On September 3rd, 1759, the Jesuits' possessions were confiscated and they were banished from Portugal. Number 2. Banishment from France In 1704, the Jesuits were deemed to have disturbed the peace and order of the state. Number three, banishment from Spain. On April 2nd, 1767, in Spain, 5,000 Jesuits were arrested had their possessions confiscated and were banished. Number three, the suppression of the Jesuits. Pope Clement the Fourteenth came up with a measure to suppress the Jesuits. And on July 21st, 1773, he notified the leader of the Jesuits of their suppression. The Jesuits were officially dissolved. The governments of various states cooperated with this order. However, Russia and Prussia officially recognized the continued existence of the Jesuit order. In 1814, Pope Pius VII granted the Jesuits' permission, and their suppression came to an end.
Number nine, the continents enlightenment ideas. Deism entered France from England. In France, this ideology developed in a radical way as a materialistic ideology. Eventually, it became a hostile force city. Let us take a look at the major figures of the continent's Enlightenment ideas. Number one, Voltaire. Voltaire was born in 1694 and died in 1778. He entered the Jesuit order when he was 10 years old and he studied law there. In 1750, he was invited by the Prussian king to introduce France's ideas to Germany. Near the end of his days, he wrote books in Switzerland. Let us take a look at his ideas. He believed in liberation of reason and free of mind. Doing so, he destroyed tradition in every way. He attacked Christianity with ridicule and satirical literature. He said, I believe in the existence of God. God's goodness is infinite, but his power is finite. He said morality is the basis for metaphysics. Number two, Denis Diderot. Diderot was born in 1713 and died in 1784. He was a French philosophical critic who believed in deism. His ideas were those of materialistic, sentimental, theistic naturalism. He wrote the book, Philosophical Thoughts. Number three, Holbach. Holbach was born in 1723 and died in 1789. He claimed to abandon the concept of God, select nature, and gain happiness. He said, Nature allows people to discover the light and the tr truth. He was a materialistic atheist. Number four, J.J. Rousseau. Rousseau was born in 1712 and died in 1778. He said, turn. 
Nature makes man good. Nature made man free and happy, but society is evil and made man unhappy. He wrote the social contract, confessions, and a meal. Number five. G. W. Leibniz. Leibniz was born in sixteen forty six and died in seventeen sixteen. He was a German philosopher, lawyer, mathematician, historian, and Theologian. He had monads at the center of his philosophy. He made the claim for monadology. God is the greatest monad. God is the cre creator of all monads. Number six, other scholars. Christian Wolff, Moses Mendelssohn, and Herman Samuel Raymaris are among the other scholars. Number ten, the Pietism movement. One, the motive for the Pietism movement. Because the existing church had become secularized, there was the need for an internal movement. The customs of existing churches. Had become corrupt, and the church lacked sermons of spiritual grace. The, the significance of the Pietism movement. The movement was a mysterious movement that happened. During the end of the seventeenth century, in Germany's Lutheran Church, it was a movement that respected the movement of the Holy Spirit and internal life. Number three. The claims of the Pietists. Number one. There is no need for new doctrine, but it is proper to return to the Bible in terms of theological theory. Number two. One. Must have light in their spirit to be capable of understanding the truth of the number three. One who is reborn by the holy power of the Holy Spirit has light in their heart. Number four. Key figures of Pietism. Number one, Philip Jacob Spener. Spener was born in Alsace in sixteen thirty-five, 
and died in 1705. Since he was young, he was trained in the faith. He avidly read books of faith, and he lived a pious life. In 1666, he was ordained a pastor. He established the Collegia Pietatis and had regular gatherings. Number 2. August Hermann Frank Frank was born in Lübeck in 1663 and died in 1727. He delivered sermons and gave lectures at the University of Leipzig's Collegium Philobiblicum. He accumulated great power through this group, but he was later forbidden from having these gatherings. He later went to the University of Haula, where he served as professor and pastor. He founded an orphanage and established a printing center and a publications center. Number three, J. A. Bengal. Bengal was born in 1687 and died in 1752. He was a German theologian and pastor who started the Pietism movement. His major works include eschatology and commentary on the New Testament. Number five, the achievements and results of pietism. The pietism movement stimulated the studying of the Bible. Consequently, things in terms of theology transitioned from theory to practice. As this happened, effort for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and for individual change. However, it also brought upon radical abstinence, and the church went from being systematized to being separated. They were able to achieve much in evangelizing Moravia. Number six, the Moravian Brethren. Number one, the origin of the Moravian Brethren. The Thirty Years' War happened from 1618 to 1648, and it was during the war that John Huss' party fled 
to Bohemia after being persecuted by the Roman Church. Germany's Count Zinzendorf allowed them to live on his territory, and on August 13, 1727, the Moravian Church was established. Number two, the work and achievements of the Moravians. They worked for an anti-monastic way of cultivating faith. Their purpose was for world evangelism. They went to various places around the world and evangelized. John Wesley was greatly inspired by these people. Number 11. The Methodist Movement Number 1. The Origin of the Methodist Movement In order to bring the world of religion out of its stagnation, the University of Oxford of England, with John Wesley playing the leading role, studied the Bible and visited prisons to evangelize. This was the beginning of the Methodist Church. Number two, the organization of the Methodist Church. They did not have priests, but had a bishop government. They had a centralized system. The General Assembly voted on the bishop, and the elected bishop would send out pastors. Church workers included pastors, elders, deaconesses, and class leaders. Number three, Methodist doctrines. There is no discrimination in God's grace. Christ died on the cross for all sinners. However, man is responsible for going to hell. They believe in the doctrine of original sin, but they cannot believe that man is completely corrupt. Someone made righteous by faith must continue to effort to become holier. Number four, the process of the establishment of the Methodist Church. The people gathered at a building for the first time in May 1739. In July 1740, there were officially 26 men and women who formed the organization. Number 5. Wesley's Revival Movement John Wesley was born in June 1703 as the 15th child of an English pastor, and he died 
in 1791. His mother was Susanna. He studied at the University of Oxford. At the university, he organized a group called the Holy Club and served as leader of the club. The Holy Club did the following things. They gathered with the purpose of piety, and they read the Bible and holy books. They gathered to pray every night. They looked after the sick, the poor, and the imprisoned. Wesley was sent as a missionary to America, but he returned without achieving much. On the journey back home, his ship was caught in a storm. He was inspired by the Moravian believers after seeing them calmly evangelize in the storm. On May 24, 1738, Wesley attended the Moravian Brethren prayer gathering and experienced God's presence and power. To learn the pious lifestyle of the Moravian Brethren, Wesley visited Count Zinzendorf of Germany stayed two weeks. In May 1739, he gave his first outdoor sermon in Bristol, where they saw great revival happen. On May 12, 1739, the Methodist Church was established in Bristol. Wesley had 381 works of writing. His slogan is, The world is my parish. Number 12. The Quakers and the Swedenborg Movement. Number 1. The Quakers. We will take a look at the key Quaker figures. Number 1. George Fox. Fox was born in 1624 and died in 1601. He was born to a weaver of London. He wandered aimlessly when he was 19 years old because of mental conflicts. In 1646, he claimed that he found peace in his heart after a divine revelation. At a church in Nottingham in 1649, Fox rose from his seat during worship and said, We must receive light from heaven if we want to understand the Bible and realize the truth. He was imprisoned for disturbing worship. He traveled to places around the world 
and evangelized to gain many followers. Number two, William Penn. Penn was born in 1644 and 18. He was born in London and his family was loved by the Stuart royal family. In 1667, he was inspired by George Fox's sermon and became a follower. He established a colony in Pennsylvania of America and moved the Quakers to that area. Number three, doctrine and lifestyle of the Quakers. The Quakers valued the inner light of Christ. They felt no need for baptism, communion, and other sacraments. Worship had no order, and whoever was inspired could lead worship. Every church member was a clergy person. The Quakers sermon on and were opposed to war. They also began the movement to abolish slavery. They wore simple clothing and lived simple and faithful lives. Number four, conclusion. Quakers do not have any sort of theological system. Additionally, they had a very weak church government system. They were severely persecuted by radical mysticism. However, when James II in England established freedom of religion for Protestants in 1687, Quakers were granted freedom of worship. Number two, Emanuel Swedenborg. Number one, the life of Emanuel Swedenborg. Sweden born in 88 and died in 1772. He was the son of a Lutheran pastor of Stockholm, Sweden. His father was a professor at the University of Uppsala and a Bible critic. Swedenborg studied various fields and circuited the countries of Europe. He was invited by King Charles XII to be advisor at a mining center where he invented many science instruments. He was a scientist, philosopher, and politician who remained celibate his entire life. Number two, his faith and ideas. At the age of 54, he became a follower of the possession by spirits. In 1747, he resigned from all devoted himself to prayer and studying the Bible. He said that there is no God apart from Jesus Christ. His ideology is a strange mixture of natural science 
and religious ideas. He said, the problem of salvation could be solved by that which transcends na natural science and the self of the possession of spirits. On December 5th, 1783, in London, his church began as an independent group of the Christian church. In 1787, they created principles and a system to begin an independent Christian church movement. In 1817, the Swedenborg Assembly was held in America. Number 13, Early Christian in America. Number 1, Colonies of the New Continent. 1, The Virginia Colony. England's first colony of the New Continent was established in Virginia. The colony was formed in 1607 in Jamestown, where churches were planted. The region was developed for agriculture and mining. Number 2. The Plymouth Colony of New England The Puritans who crossed over to the new continent on the Mayflower in 1620 built this colony. Number 3. The Salem Colony 800 Puritans crossed over in 1628 and developed this place. Number 2. The Leaders of Early Christianity in America Number 1. Jonathan Edwards Edwards was born to a pastor in 1703 and died in 1758. He graduated from Yale University in 1720. He worked as a as professor at Yale University and in 1758 he became president of Princeton University. His major ideology is Calvinist theology. Let us take a look at his writings. He wrote Thoughts on the Revival, 1742, Freedom of Will, 1754, and Original Sin, 1758. Number 2. Other leaders are Theodore J. Freelinghausen, William Tennant, and George Whitefield. Number 14. The French 1. The cause of the French Revolution. The first cause of the French Revolution was the corruption of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church possessed 20% of the state's entire wealth, but it did not pay any taxes. First, second, there was economic unbalance. Most of the people were very poor, while the minority nobles and clergymen lived luxurious lives. Furthermore, there was much political corruption. The king acted in tyranny 
and public office positions were sold. There was an inconsistency to society's hierarchical structure. In other words, there were three classes, clergymen, nobles, and farmers. The upper class exploited the lower class. Number two, the occurrence of the French Revolution and its results. On May 5, 1789, the Estates General, consisting of priests, nobles, and commoners, was convened due to the lack of finances. The Estates General was entrusted with state affairs. This began the revolution. On July 14, 1789, the people attacked Bastille, and the day was celebrated as a day of liberty, equality, and fraternity. The hierarchical structure was abolished, church property was nationalized, and Protestants were given the freedom of worship. The Republican government was established on September 21, 1792. It was during this time that Louis XVI and the high officials were executed. On November of that year, the Republican government was shut down due to opposition by the Catholics. But in 1799, Napoleon staged a coup d'etat to seize power. This concludes the 16th lecture on church history. Thank you.